the inventory is the fuel, but marketing is driving the car. Looking back on the P&L and seeing your, you know, operating expenses go down by 8%, you know, that sounds pretty sexy to me. So I get excited. They're going to automatically remove this and it's going to cost you $14,000. You know, you're gonna wake up in there, your business is gonna have $14,000 less. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Shuket. Today we have Chelsea Cohen on the call. Chelsea is the founder of So Stocked, which has uh, recently sold to Carbon6. So now she's involved with them. We've had some of those guys uh, on the call or on the podcast before. Uh, such a great group. Uh, but Chelsea's also a, a longtime Amazon seller. I think you said 2014 you got started. Uh, yep. and, and, you know, you got that great tool so stocked uh, to help with supply chain stuff. So, yeah, we're excited to bring you on and, and hear what you've been up to and, and what's in the pipeline for so stocked. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very glad to be here. I love MDS. So. It's always good when I get the, the chance to work with you guys. Yeah, it's uh, such a great community to be a part of. Um, it's also what I like about Carbon 6. I, I, you know, I think they're building a community over there as well, from my perspective. Uh, I love seeing those guys at the events. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's cool to see you, you know, involved in that. And uh, I think we typically see each other uh, at events, which is just such a, it's such a, a blessing, you know, sometimes it just, it hits me like it is right now. Um, uh -huh. how cool it is to network with just great people. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's funny because I was just telling my husband, like there aren't a lot of opportunities in a lot of industries to connect with so many different cultures, so many different communities, you know, um, from, you know, Romanians and you got, you know, Russian friends, like just all over the world, it's, you know, you know, someone in every part of the world when you work in this industry. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, we've, I've got friends in, in, you know, Turkey now. I've got friends in, you know, Southeast Asia, all over the U.S., um, England. Uh, it's, you know, we go to New York City and I stay with a member and it's like such a great place to stay up there. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do stuff like that if, uh, you know, we didn't meet meet the people in the community, um, Absolutely. which is great. Um, so yeah, you know, Chelsea, I'm a so stocked user. Uh, I, I, I could talk a little bit about our workflow. I think our workflow, it's like something simple and, and maybe I always try and check my perspective, you know, cause I started out as a, a reseller through like arbitrage, drop shipping, um, you know, wholesale, uh, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, um, and and keeping that stuff dialed in uh, what was pretty hard, you know, like on, on stock levels. It, it kind of sold a lot faster than, um, you know, like private label stuff if you're kind of getting that off the ground. And then there's things you can't control, you know, brand branded search that you're not in control of, <laughs> you know, happening on Amazon. Um, because you're selling big, big brand name stuff. So for us, putting together a PO and getting it into Amazon and knowing exactly what our, our landed cogs are, how that formula is being calculated, um, creating a shipment tied to that purchase, keeping it all tied together and having an easy path to look back on how profitable your purchase was mm -hmm. right yeah. like that it's you know to me it's kind of like simple and and it's critical but to have a process that allows you to do that efficiently uh, is it, it wasn't an easy thing for me to get to you know it was like uh it's so stocked helps us with that inventory lab was another tool which was like the for one of the first tools i used uh, yeah. which had a great little like bar, kind of like battery graph chart at the bottom. And you could see all your fees like chunked up in your profit. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So I, I, I'll kind of just touch on that because um, I think it's simple but powerful. And like everyone should have a process they can depend on for generating POs, especially as, as you scale. Yeah, exactly. As you scale, adding more, you know, ASINs, more marketplaces, and you have to combine all of that together to create one PO for your supplier, but then it has to split out into the different, you know, the different marketplaces 
and keeping that all coordinated can get really out of hand especially you know we've got sellers that have hundreds and even thousands of asins that they're having mm-hmm. to supplying yeah and it, it can lead to significant savings too and and i love and uh the efficiency behind it you know if you get in there and you put in your product dimensions you put in your case pack dimensions uh you tie it to your sub you know your supplier's information uh it's you don't re- realize how much it's doing if if you've had to do all that stuff manually before um yeah uh, so i think some some yeah. people kind of take it for granted right and when they're thinking about how much they're going to pay for a piece of software uh they're not thinking about these value adds uh i mean hell it's not not everyone just knows how to go like generate a nice purchase order right on on google uh you know you need like an adobe uh plug in or you know you need something uh to to generate a fillable document like that that can serve as something official and trackable um so i think i try to think of all that stuff when i'm looking uh at software and and that's another value i i i see from so stocked um is that that purchase order that work order that drafting process I really like because it helps us collaborate with uh, other members of the team uh, that are involved in that mm-hmm. process. Yeah, and I think that's important. You know, I have a a bit of a finance background, and one of the things that was really frustrating some of the software that we would work with is someone makes a change, and you don't know who made that change to be able to trace back and say why did this happen, um, and. And, you know, when you log in, everyone can have their own login to be able to see, you know, who did this and, you know, why was it done? It's a a form of, you know, communication to be able to see what the changes, you know, logging of the changes are. Yeah. And that's so critical. One thing I talk about on the podcast often, often is like um, communication in like a virtual uh, work environment. And it's, it's amazing how many people will just kind of think they don't need to do that. They don't need to okay. drop that note. They don't need to, you know, give some type of like logic and reasoning behind what they did and why and what they expect to happen. Um, and stuff like that's super critical for, uh, you know, virtual businesses that, that are scaling and hiring people. You need to have that, that communication loop uh, yeah. dialed in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and um yeah, so you kind of bake a little bit of project management in there, which which is just super valuable. Um, and the onboarding calls have been super helpful. The focus reports we're using those on our weekly meetings yeah. now, and and we were actually able to like take a lot of stuff off our scorecard um, and and replace it with some of that stuff. So that was super helpful as well. Yeah, and that's something that we're getting you know we're getting into more is how do we make it more actionable. Yeah, you know, we started in 2020 is when we really did our aggressive launch. Um, timing couldn't have been more perfect for an inventory software back then. But, you know, I've been teaching on this subject, you know, for that long and found that, you know, you have data and that's one piece, but there's also strategy and execution. And so that's what we're working to build into the software and into our processes more and more is, you know, I've been talking about data and talking about the strategy and the processes and the action items, but it's not enough just to talk about it. It's how can we put the strategy into the hands of the sellers and how can we make that actionable so someone can look on a weekly basis and go, you know what, I know what needs to be done. I know the status of every ASIN and I know what the financial impact of my decisions are. Yeah, I and and we're definitely leaning in into that because it's it's I feel like even if it doesn't get you exactly where maybe you you wanted to get before you adopt the focus reports, like it's still going to get the staff and the team members looking at those things like heading the right direction. Uh so we kind of just shifted right towards that cuz you guys have that column, that kind of action column. Um, uh-huh. yeah. and I was like, Hey guys, you know, don't, don't come talk to me until you've done these things, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. you know, which is, uh, super helpful. Awesome. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because inventory, you know, we always say it's a slow boat to turn. So anything you do with 
a physical inventory, whether you move it or don't move it, every decision has a financial impact. Yeah. And it's so tough to like keep track of that, those things as well. And I think that's another great thing that so stocked is helping us do is, is being able to look at that stuff more quickly and seeing the impact it's having. I was talking to you about how we're taking those inventory timelines and copying and pasting them into a Google sheet and then adding that column, uh, to, to add like the AWD fees, the transportation, you know, fee and, and all that stuff based on our different options to get products into Amazon. Um, and I, there's so much great stuff, uh, you know, behind the scenes on, on the tool there, as far as like setting your buffer inventory, you know, for your warehouse and your FBA. And, um, I think it really, it's, it's, really helpful to try and develop a timeline of, of like order frequency over the year uh-huh. um, and hopefully like ship in some ways that are going to cost be more cost effective like right. you know if you're going LTL can you put a plan together that pushes you to FTL because there's a lot of savings there um, yeah you know and moving to like full uh, you know full containers or or using LGL for uh, you know LCL type shipments uh-huh yeah absolutely the consolidation and there's a lot of ways to use supply chain and inventory planning to affect your bottom line yeah there are huge opportunities and it's sometimes really knowing the options which i think that's why i educate there are so many ins and outs of you know of awd and what those policies um, and programs afford in terms of waiving fees. There are the aged inventory fees and the structure and, you know, the ticking time bomb that is aged inventory, um, low inventory fees, which as you break them down are actually not going to impact people as much as possible. And people have been really nervous about that, but it's actually, yeah. you know, really understanding. And it took me, me a while to understand. And that's my, you know, that's my business. Um, but there are so many pieces that fit together that I've always felt it's, I'm very passionate about sharing, sharing the data. But again, you know, we've written a, Vanessa Hung and I wrote a white paper, we've done webinars, but it's how do you take an understanding, first of all, an understanding, which is not very, you know, prevalent throughout our community, but more importantly, the strategy involved. How can I save over on this side if I'm paying, if I can't avoid the inbound fees, how can I, you know, resize my product to get an extra 30 cents per, you know, per unit or, you know, use AWD to waive my aged inventory fees and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a tough uh, landscape to navigate. And uh, I know like when I first started getting introduced into that world, uh, you're just uncovering a lot that you I didn't know. Um, Uh you know, I think like being the ability to like negotiate shipping rates and, and what you're going to get if you just hop on the internet and, and try and ship something somewhere versus, you know, even walk into a UPS store versus like getting a rep and negotiating and, and like having that conversation and with multiple people and, you know, getting negotiated rates, um, you know, that can make or break a business. You know, you can go from unprofitable to profitable just from, stuff like that. Um, yeah. so it's critical it, and it's, it's, I, I can get in there and figure stuff out, but it's not something I'm keeping a pulse on day to day, uh, yeah. which I think is important. You need someone that's, that's doing that. Yeah, exactly. Like one of the things that, um, changed suddenly was Amazon created a new policy about on the 15th of the month, they do, they'll do as an assessment and they'll see, is there product that you have sitting at Amazon has been, been there over a year and hasn't sold for six months. And we're working with a big seller. This is an eight figure seller. There's a lot of aged inventory involved. And we did, we ran an assessment, you know, we found out it, it got announced recently in, you know, April giving you, you know, a little over two weeks basically to make the call, ran the assessment, you know, really quickly because we have that data sent this seller a message saying they're going to automatically remove this and it's going to cost you fourteen thousand mm-hmm. know, dollars you're going to wake up in there your business is going to have fourteen thousand dollars less sitting there 
And so just by simply, you know, alerting to that, a plan can be de devised of, okay, you have 14 days to drop the price, try to market as much as possible. If you can move that inventory, it won't be automatically removed. You'll still be incurring those fees, but by the 14th of the month, do something or you're going to be charged a bunch on the 15th when those fees are assessed. So there's kind of knowing the, the cadence of the fees. One of the strategies is on the 16th of the month, you look at your aged inventory, um, the FBA, uh, we have it in so stocked. Um, we pull that in and we calculate uh, it to the future for 12 months, but there's a report if you're not using a software um, the fba inventory report will give you the age of the inventory and so you can look at and identify asins that are in those higher ranges nine months yep. and above you're being charged you know over five dollars per cubic foot and so you can make the that call of you know now i have a month to sell through the inventory as much as possible and then on the 14th of the month make a decision um one of the things that can happen is we've alerted people sometimes to this. We do a free profit audit at the beginning of our conversation and we've had people just knee jerk reaction, remove the inventory. Yeah. And it costs a lot. And a lot of people forget about Amazon has a liquidation program, mm -hmm. which will stop the bleeding. Once you place that order on the 14th, you'll no longer be charged aged inventory and you'll also get some cash back, you know, within the 90 days. Uh, in most cases, they charge a processing fee, they take a percentage, but most of the time you'll get some money back in your pocket that you can then reinvest and you're no longer paying the fees. So it actually has a, a net savings um, in addition to what you would make on the liquidation. Yeah, that's a critical process. I find myself you know, having to deal with on my own, right? Like I haven't really been able to outsource that decision making process of you know uh, w how much it's going to cost to remove uh how much you know is it you know, how much could we boost advertising um yeah. you know and making that decision um, uh -huh. a lot of what i've realized is a lot of staff you know they'll they like we they were just thinking like sending it into other marketplaces uh -huh. You know, so I, that's where you, like I learned my lesson is like, all right, they're not thinking about the impact of sending this into a different marketplace or the probability that it's not going to sell because it's not if it's not selling on Amazon. It's most likely not going to sell on Walmart. Um, yeah. You know, obviously there's there's some areas where that could be different, but at least going through that, you know, set of questions to get down to the the best choice. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually something that we've we've put together is, you know. The next stage of of so stocked is we're going to be launching a profit killers piece identifying not just you know what's where your profit is at now but where your projected profit will be based on your current timeline your current sales velocity and then taking all of that and putting it through a filter of what we call overstock strategy which gives you in the next three months or the next six months what am i going to be paying in you know aged inventory fees what if I remove it? How much is that going to cost? What about liquidation? What about marketing? So that with all of those factors, you can make a decision because that's the big, you know, when you don't have all those factors, you don't have the ability to make a big, you know, a quick decision. And so therefore, usually a decision is not made. And that's where yeah. you start racking up the fees. Yeah. 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 You got to be on, on to you gotta have a pulse on that quickly. And, and I know so stocked is helping us do that. I don't think we've even unlocked you know, nearly most of the potential of the tool. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's been a win for us so far and it's been helpful for like training other people on and then having like Colette to help with onboarding is like so valuable. Um, you guys really do a good job and I think carbon six does a great job of this, but I know so stock did it, um, even back in the day of just like helping people be successful, um, with the tool and, and yeah. that's a big value yeah. add also. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, MDS has been huge for So Stocked as well. Uh, 2020, right at the beginning, January, February, before COVID even started, started getting, um, we had a Facebook group and would ask, you know, how did you hear about So Stocked? And started seeing MDS, you know, coming in. I was like, I didn't even know what MDS was. <laughs> 
I was taking all the support calls. And so finally I got someone who, you know, I was like, how did you hear about us? Oh, MDS. I was like, what is that? Like, yeah. I see you guys. And they said, you know, there's a lot of buzz about So Stocked. We hope you are what we think you are. And then like a month later, the floodgates kind of opened. We had a really great feedback loop because I was taking all the calls. My partner was was doing all the support tickets, working, you know, us working directly with the um, development team. We were able to take the ideas being fed to us, you know, by sellers such as yourself and just develop the software. So we got a lot of help from some of the best minds in MDS creating what so stocked is today. Yeah, that's always great. Uh, I've seen that happen um, a couple times, like with some software. Um, some of them not around anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, it's always great when you can kind of take like that that logic and like bake it into a piece of software. I mean, I, that's uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. that's that's huge because you know the way that we look at things, or I look at things, and what I need for my business has been you know just one way. And you get these other business models and you get some really smart people who look at data differently, yep. who have different needs, and you're able to, you know, pull the the best resources. You know, I call it uh, crowdsourcing, you know, crowdsourcing information. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I know a lot of members are still actively using that software, saying a lot of good things about it. Um, so it's, it's standing the test of time. And, um, you know, what, what else is on the horizon? Like any features, uh, coming up that you want to let people know about? Yeah. Um, so we've had aged inventory for a while. Our plan is to be able to graph that so that you have a quick visual representation of when is your, when are you going to have a huge spike? You know, if you can see not just the aged inventory fees, but all inventory, inventory fees, you know, fourth quarter we have you know that huge spike that comes about where people wake up and they write posts about twenty six thousand dollars being taken from their account and so being able to see that coming down the horizon three four months from now you're able mm -hmm. to act on that and you're able to you know because everything is tied in with so stocked to the timeline so if i can predict sales and inventory orders there's no reason that if I don't bake the, if I bake the fee policies into the software, there's no reason I can't actually project that. And I won't be waking up being surprised by, you know, that huge impact. And I can actually look at, do I have any products that are not huge sellers in fourth quarter? Why would I sit on a bunch of inventory at $2 and 40 cents per cubic foot? and pay all that money on inventory that's not even going to move during that time. So let me blast through that or otherwise solve that before it becomes a huge problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I know we're looking at that into that number up there and it's it's great to get ahead of it uh, and and start working on it. It gives you more time to think through, you know, what, what, are, my, what are my options here? What am I gonna do? What's it gonna cost me? Uh, yeah. What's my goal? You know, and going down that that path of making a good decision based on data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, um, you know, starting to be able to plan, plan for the future. And I think just looking at business differently, and that's what I'm really interested in is, you know, planning for, are you, you're profitable today? Are you going to be profitable tomorrow? Products that, you know, maybe six months ago were profitable, something's changed in the market, and you've got a bunch of inventory, you may not be as profitable as you think you are, and that capital is tied up. Yeah. Let's look at not just, you know, this is how much money we have tied up, but what could we do if we decided not to restock that product? We're always looking for cash flow and we're spending money on um, funding sources when you're sitting on a bunch of cash and it's not only is the cash uh, tied up and you're continuing to cycle through, but also you've got capital that can be recovered, you know? And so we're the, the objective for this new um, stage of so stocked is showing that and being able to say, this is my, this is my baseline margin. This is my baseline return on investment. This is my target. 
what cash can I pull out of my business through liquidation or through marketing and then take that cash and if I reinvest it in my target, you know, a product in my target return on investment, what is that money worth? What is yeah. the lost opportunity cost? Seeing those numbers makes the decision a lot more logical, less emotional. And then you can actually work on, you know, scaling your business like we all want to do um, because the numbers and the data sh shows that. Yeah, man, I, I love that. It gives me, I get so many ideas with the supply chain stuff because it touches like everything, yeah. right? Like there's all these like dots you can connect mm -hmm. once you've been doing it for a while. Um, Cause like in our, and it's so unique to your business model, right? So one of our issues that we run into is like, where do we best spend our money? What products we've got, you yeah. know, thousands of SKUs because of our reselling business. And then we've got the private label companies. And like, it's like one thing I realized that we're missing is, is having a quick understanding of net operating capital. Like how much do we have available to generate a purchase order? Um, yeah. you, you know, so like being able to, that would be so cool for us. Um, you know, if we had that like in, in so stocked yeah. and you could kind of create like purchase orders based on that, uh, and know like, Hey, I've got enough money, uh, to do this. And then, yeah, like you said, um, you know, being able to visualize that data, uh, on, on like the liquidating, that's one that I'm not, I don't have a good pulse on yet. Like even in my mind, like sometimes I've got it in my head, but it's hard to like get out or teach, but even yeah. across all our, our products, um, it's hard to decide, uh, you know, like what to do, what to liquidate. We have a big, a product, a, a brand with a uh, big return issues, like eating into our margin, but, uh, you know, it's dog sizing stuff. Like it's just tough. Yeah. Sizing is always tough size, you know, colors, that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's so much that supply chain touches. I mean, you guys, could just add so many features, you know, I'm sure you guys, how, what's your process like for, for rolling out features or coming up with stuff? I mean, coming up with stuff <laughs> is, is easy, but, um, really it starts with knowing the blind spots, you know, knowing the opportunity that we have to help sellers to look at their business differently. It touches, you know, there's inventory, but it touches finance and it touches marketing, and one of the things I try to, you know, instill in people is that marketing has a bigger impact on inventory than any other uh, of those three branches, because it's the, it's the spigot, you know, or it's the, you say, you know, sometimes I say the inventory is the fuel, but marketing is driving the car. Yeah. So being able to take that, um, yeah, it's really sitting down knowing there's blind spots, what is going to be the most impactful thing first and then there's the thing that's next and then beyond that first is the data you can't do anything without data and then there's a strategy and then that will inform what the action items and the focus is going to be um, so that's kind of the the first piece and then it's i will sit down with the spreadsheet you know that's how everyone everything starts and work out those formulas put them together, be able to build a model where I'm looking at a report with the data that has been extracted from SoStock and then taking that, breaking it into, you know, uh, something that we can give to development. Say, here's where the data is, here's what it looks like, here's the formulas, and then they go build it and we launch it. And then of course there's the iterations with feedback. Awesome. Yeah. Those, um, yeah, there's so many blind spots. Like you mentioned, I was thinking of, of like being a reseller and and you're in the buy box, but you're not running advertising and, and you know, your inventory is aging um, and, you know, you decide, hey, I'm going to try this advertising thing and uh, you get in the buy box and, you know, maybe like 10x what you sold. Right. Because now you got in, you know, the number three spot top of search. Uh, and, and you just, you know, increased your sales by a significant amount. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, to that point, um, one of the things that, you know, we can help you do that, but, uh, tracking those things, right. Yeah. Um, we were working with the seller and he has the same thing where he looks at, okay, here's aged inventory, looks at the sales 
ranking looks at the um, buy box. Oh, I'm not, I don't have the buy box. My buy box percentage is low. I'm going to drop the price. This one, you know, I have 100% buy box, but the, um, the sales rank is low. I'm going to liquidate that. And then if it's a price drop, we've got um, columns for, you know, two day, seven day, five, 15 day, 30 day, you know, up to 180 day velocity. Well, if you look at the two day, seven day and 15 day on a weekly basis, you can see if that price drop is actually having, you know, moving the needle. And if it's not, by the time you get to the 14th, you can say, okay, we've done our best. We're going to liquidate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's such a valuable tool for someone like me who has a lot of, of, of SKUs in the catalog, different accounts to manage, mm -hmm. um, the hopes of training someone, you know, to be able to manage it is, is something the platform offers us, um, mm -hmm. as well. But I think, you know, at some point, unless you're like a supply chain type person, like you need a piece of software, like so stocked because it's going to do replace a lot of manual work. It's going to keep alerts. I love like the email. I love being able to depend on an email alert, uh, to, to like trigger the need for a restocking workflow, right? Like that's the peace of yeah. mind that comes with that. I'm always looking for that in softwares because now I don't feel like I have to check it every, yeah. every day or whatever, you uh -huh. know, the schedule would be, yeah. um, so yeah, unless you're one of those lucky people with like one product doing doing a million in revenue, um, there's a good chance you probably need a tool. Uh, I, I would say you need so stocked. Like there isn't another one that's as niche down as, as so stocked in in my opinion. And and not trying to do too many other things. Yeah. You know, in the same piece of software. Yeah, uh, and I've always said like I I feel that if you are inventory and you're not going to be successful because there are so many other things that you know need your attention and policies change all the time you know yeah. from 2020 we had restock limits you know uh ASIN level restock limits and then catalog wide restock limits and then we had you know the um the uh pay to play uh storage and now we have all the fees and i write i write a weekly um, newsletter and part of I attribute my success partly to that because we see all of these policy changes coming through and yeah. I know that like the back of my hand now like I can rattle off you know all of the different uh, fee tiers for age inventory how that whole policy works because we're immersed in it and so if you're spinning so many plates inventory is such a complex beast and it changes so much from you know month to month that if you're not just really focused on that, you're gonna you're gonna miss things. Yeah, um, I, I agree one hundred percent. I think that's such a, it's another value add, you know, to the software as you get tapped into that. Um, you know, people will get the opportunity to email you and and you know get to a, a look into like the strategy piece as well from someone who who's very experienced with the strategy and the tactical part. Um, so I think it's it's a it's a great tool uh, and well worth the 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 cost on it. Um, Chelsea, before we go, did you want to drop like you got any tips you can you can hit any people with like things you're seeing that are helping you know save money on on supply chain stuff or, or what you're seeing as far as like the best option to to mitigate those uh, you know inbound placement fees? Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, you know, there's this talk about and Vanessa Hung just did a post about it, which is cool. There's this talk about, you know, using some tools that will circumvent the inventory placement fees. But Vanessa brought up the point that Amazon has a policy and they've been sending out some emails saying, hey, we noticed that you're doing this. We're actually yeah. going to chart you anyway. We're going to reassess what you, you know, didn't send and we will attribute what you did send, you know, apply the, the placement fee accordingly. So those things are not the best long-term or even short-term solutions, Amazon really is forcing a lot of people into um, Amazon warehousing and distribution. A yep. lot of sellers are, are going that way. I would never recommend that being your only strategy, but a, a piece of the strategy, there's just so many waived fees, so much upside that Amazon has just set up um, for that inventory placement fee, you know, 
and then just having strategies. Um, we, we advise a lot in terms of looking at resizing your product and Amazon's actually launched new fee, new fee tiers this year. They, they chopped up the fee tiers into more, more tiers, uh, instead of, instead of half a pound, they're doing it by quarter pound. And of course, with dimensional weight factoring in, we're seeing a lot more opportunities where a product maybe didn't qualify for a tier reduction, but now has very little to adjust. You know, we're talking about quarters of inches, quarter, you know, uh, fractions of pounds to adjust to get into that lower tier, which can sometimes just be requesting a remeasure by Amazon or just going to your supplier and just tweaking something. Nice. Yeah, that stuff can have such a big impact on the P&L at the end of the year if you're doing yeah. a lot of volume. Absolutely. Yeah, and we have um, some free tools. We have a free tool that does that analysis. Uh, you can scroll down to the bottom of it and request for us to audit your entire catalog. And then we have a piece that is for um, carton optimization, you know, units okay. per carton, units per pallet, so that you know, you're reducing the, the per carton fees, reducing the storage and really just, you know, especially if you're sending to AWD where they charge you on a per box basis, right. you can get more units into a single box, then that uh, can significantly lower your cost per unit simply because you've got more items in a box. Yeah, I need to do that. We were talking about that. So is that something you just, you look, uh, can I go on the website and I'll find that? You will. Um, we could also, if you reach out to me, we the the one on the website is single use, and so if you okay. scroll to the bottom, there's the um, the bulk. But you can also just reach out to me, and we can run it on our end as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that because uh, cool. we need to optimize that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Chelsea, thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, I, I really think this part of the business is super important right now, whether you want to think it's sexy or not sexy or whatever, like looking back on the P and L and seeing your, you know, operating expenses go down by 8%, you know, that sounds pretty sexy to me. So I get excited yeah. about this stuff now more, more than I have before. Um, mainly just from that practice now of like, looking at a P&L and tying it to functions of a business and and really knowing what lever to pull to to get the result that I want. Um, but yeah, I know Vanessa Hung talks about like operational efficiency a lot as well, but it's, you know, it's, it's just uh, a way to run an efficient business. And I think that's what Amazon, you know, that's where they're, they're pointing us to yep. they're like, Hey, you should have minimum inventory levels yeah. on your own, right? We shouldn't have to tell you this stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and the fees reflect you know, that. They lowered the fees for monthly storage and, you know, fulfillment. And they're penalizing people who have too much monthly storage, you know, in aged inventory and too little in the additional fulfillment fee with low inventory levels. So they're definitely doing that. Um, we can go into a lot of the politics and the decisions that they're making, which I geek out on. But the, yeah. the bottom line is they're rewarding people for for being good at inventory management and they're penalizing people for not being. Yeah. Well, if you're one of those people that's a, a little hesitant, I mean, I would just hit up so stocked and and lean on them to help you through it. Because like I said, you're going to get a good software, but you're going to get kind of someone holding your hand through it um, as well. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it can be a, a, a quick fix uh, to, to solve that need. Awesome. Thank you. But uh, yeah, Chelsea, thanks for coming on and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Awesome. Great talking to you.